Alright guys, Jamal116 back with the explanation of my red of my analog adder and subtractor. Um, I'm gonna do the adder first, and then I'm gonna do subtractor afterwards, but just as a quick disclaimer, um, there's a lot of math involved in this video, and if math is something that makes your head hurt, you might just want to take an aspirin now, because it's going to be hurting by the end of this video. Um, basically, for my adder, I've got the A, A is the top number up here, and B is the bottom number down on the bottom. So basically, when you do A plus B, there's going to be two operations that take place. Now, the first one is for if the answer is less than 10, and that is basically it's going to take 10 minus A, and then subtract B from that, and then it's going to take that answer and subtract 10 from, or subtract it from 10 to give you the actual answer. So, for example, the number is 5 and 3. It'll do 10 minus 3 minus 5, which is 2, and then 10 minus 2 is 8. Now, since 5 plus 3 is 8, your algorithm just worked. Congratulations. Now, that's the way most people's adders work, and that's all there is to it. However, mine has something different. Mine has another algorithm to run for when the answer is 10 or greater, so if you have to carry. Now, this is the part that allows it to get an output that's greater than 15, unlike most people, where it's just stuck at 15. So, like, if you do 9 plus 9, 15. Not true. So, basically, I've got it going. Basically, is it takes A and B, subtracts them both from 10, and it gives you D and E, and then it does the same thing it did with the last algorithm, except instead it subtracts from 11, and then one more from that answer. Now, I'm going to explain why I do that in a second, because it seems like it'd be easier to just do it from 10, like 10 minus D minus E, like in the last one, but not quite that simple as you'll see in a second. So, example, if we do 8 and 3, then 10 minus 3 is 7, and 10 minus 8 is 2, so 11 minus 7 minus 2 equals 2, minus 1 equals 1. Since 8 plus 3 is 11, then 1 is shown on the display, because you're only looking at the first digit, the next one carries over. Now, the reason why I subtract from 11 and then subtract one more is for if you have anything that equals 10, so 5 and 5, or 6 and 4, or whatever you want, basically. So in this case, it's, I did, did, that I've did, I've done 5 and 5, so you have 11 minus 5, minus 5 equals 1, minus 1 equals 0. Now 5 plus 5 is 10, so the 0 is shown. Now, the reason I did I subtract from 11 originally is because I get that 1 at the end there. Now that 1, like right after that subtraction, is where I take the carry line from. So basically, if that piece of redstone dust is on with any signal strength at all, then it carries over to the next digit. So, if I had done it just 10 minus 5 minus 5, it would have shown a 0, and while it would have given me the right answer, it would not have shown me that I had to carry, and I would have had to add more logic to make it, like, recognize that it equals 10, and things just would not have ended very pretty. So instead, I just subtract from 11, and everything works out very nicely. So that's the adder in a nutshell. Once again, magic pistons and magic floating torches correspond to magic pistons and magic torches on the other side, and I mean, yeah, you can see this is the first one for if it's less than 10, it's just that furnace has items in it to make it equal to 10, and those just come over here, um, this one also is equal to 10, then you can see the other alg algorithm over here, the top number, once again, gets subtracted from 10, um, this hopper gives signal strength equal to 11, and that gets subtracted with the second number, then if you look here, this is the part where the carry algorithm comes out. So that piece of dust, the one I'm just breaking there, is the one that gives you the output for the carry. That comes down through the repeater here. And then the, it basically just subtracts one and goes into the answer. So basically, that's my adder in a nutshell. There's not a whole ton to it, but I kind of use a couple clever tricks to make it work better than most people's. Anyways, so we're going to go on to the subtractor now. Alright, so we're at the subtractor. No fancy, pretend I don't know what's going on kind of cut thing like last video. I <laughs> had fun doing that, but I'm not doing it this time. Um, so basically, subtractor, once again, A's on the top, B's on the bottom. Let's get into it. So if you do A minus B, once again, two operations are going to take place. There's going to be an A minus B, and then it's going to swap around and do B minus A. Now, the B minus A part is for the carry logic, which is going to be fun to go over. 
So first part, if A minus B gives you any output at all, then that output is the answer. So, for example, 7 minus 3. Because 7 minus 3 is 4, 4 is the answer. That's pretty straightforward, that's just straight up comparator subtraction. Now, for borrowing, if B minus A gives you any answer at all, then the borrow line is activated, and it essentially gives you the opposite kind of thing. So for instance, if, you're, if you have, once again, th A is 3, B is 7. Now because, once again, 7 and 3 gives you 4, but since 7 is the second number this time, then it's going to borrow from the next column, and then it's going to take that 4 and subtract it from 10 to give you 6. Now, basically, the way it can, reason it can do this is because the way I built it is we're going to assume that the bigger number is on top, and, like, overall, so, like, you'd have, so basically there'd be something for it to carry over, and it wouldn't be, like, straight up 7 minus, like, it wouldn't be straight up 3 minus 7, it would be, like, 13 minus 7, or 103 minus 7, or something, there, so that there's something it can subtract there. Um, and so that's why it's able to just show a 6. So, like, for instance, if I take my 42 here and subtract 3, it'd be able to show me 39, because that's just, it's just that good. So, you know, 42, anyone else? No, no one? Whatever. Anyways, um, and the borrow logic is essentially when this repeater, when this line, ah, I fell. So go back up, back up, back up. Woo! So, essentially, when this repeater goes on, or this dust turns on by extension that repeater, it will extend this piston. Now, this, these furnaces here, the one that's always on has a signal strength for 6, and basically when the piston goes on, it will push the block out like that, and this one has signal strength for 7, so it'll essentially begin subtracting one more from that comparator there. Now, if there's nothing to borrow, like, let's get rid of my 42 here. So, if there's nothing to borrow, like, let's say we have the number 104 minus... I'll just do 5 for now. Oh, okay, fine, 103. And I'll subtract 5. Now, that should give us 98, but like it would do in normal subtraction, you'll notice that since there's a 3 here and it goes over to borrow, there's nothing here to borrow, so it's going to have to go to this um, 1, borrow it from here to make that 10, then borrow it again, which will turn it into 9, and make that 13 to subtract. So in this case, we're doing 13 minus 4, which will give us 9, and then we have to borrow that one from over there, which will give us 99. And that was kind of what I showed off in the original showcase video when I had the one all the way over there, and just how it carried all the way over. Now, essentially, the way it does this is a little kind of and gate, kind of distorted. But basically, if the borrow is on, which is this torch here, and there's no input in the top number for the next digit over, then it will A, come over here, this will activate the carry for the next digit, which is why I ended up carrying for this one over here, and B, it will set both like paths for the A number to 9, so for instance, this piece of dust right behind the comparator here, as well as that comparator way, uh, where is it? That comparator right there are taken straight from the A number, the, the one on the top. So by making those signals 9, I can essentially make it as if you entered a 9 in here. However, of course, if there really is a 9 there, it kind of ruins the whole point, but we're not here to make a point. I guess in a way we are. But. I'm gonna turn off my example real quick. And that's essentially the subtractor, once again, in a nutshell. So again, you can see it all going on here. You can see our borrow lines. That signal basically that would make it a signal strength of nine. And that would this line comes down here to make another signal strength of nine, basically. And so yeah, that is the subtractor. Not really much to say for that. And I guess that's it. So once again, until next time, Jamal116, signing out.